Hey, this is Lloyd Pierce, pastor of Encounter Church Belito. I hope this message inspires you, and I hope it activates something on the inside of you to do great things for God. Enjoy the message. Say with me, Ratsa. Oh, come on, say it like you mean it and you understand it. Ratsa. Hallelujah. Go with me to 1 Chronicles chapter number 28, verse number, verse number 4. Are you ready for the word this morning? Hallelujah. However, the Lord God of Israel, I love David so much. I don't know why, but David is just coming up a lot. Go with me, King James Version. However, the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler and the house of Judah, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, oh, he liked me. Oh, to make me king over all Israel. David is saying here, Judah is the chosen house, but within my house I have some brothers. And within those brothers there is a certain qualification that God is looking for in order to make someone the new king over Israel. That qualification is called Ratsa. Are you with me this morning? It says that the reason that God made me king is because of one simple thing. He liked me. Oh, are you liked by God this morning? The Bible says in John 3.16, it's our most beautiful Christian scripture, for God so loved the world that He gave His begotten Son. So yes, God loves the whole world, but He only likes some. Oh, oh, it's fun. Don't get offended just yet. Let me finish. Then if, if you're offended, it's because you're not liked by God. And you don't need to like me other. You don't need to like me other. I will preach you into your purpose. I will preach you into your prosperity. I will preach you into your deliverance. Stretch your capacity. There are things in the realm of the spirit. The church is the head, not the tail. You are royalty. The Bible has created you for dominion. It says, because he liked me. That word like is the word ratsa. Ratsa means to accept, to take pleasure in, to enjoy, to favor, to delight in, to approve. Mm. It means to treat favorably, to favor, listen to this, to pay off. Specifically to satisfy a debt. Oh, come on. When you are liked by God, your debts will be settled. Amen. Maybe the reason that you're still struggling with things is because you need to move into a place of ratsa. You need to understand. You need to step into a place of ratsa. You need to step into a place of being liked by God. That means when God likes you, 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 you may not have the qualifications for a job. You put your CV in. But as you walk in, there's like something that sits and rests upon you. It's called the Ratsa of God. It's called that God likes me. He has favored me among all my brethren. You may have 50 CVs that are more qualified than you. You may have a doctorate of theology, but the Bible says that he chooses the weak things of this world to confound the wise. And there may be many more people that would be qualified. Many more people that would be qualified to usher in a move of God in a city and in a region. But guess what? God chose you and me. I said God chose you and me to do so. May you receive Ratsa this morning. Let's read it one more time. I want you to do something. In the place of Israel, say Belito. 
Or let me say this. In the place of Israel, say South Africa. Or let's say, let's say KwaZulu Natal. In the place of Judah, say Belito. In the place of, no, me, you must say me. Now read it with me. How be it the Lord God of KwaZulu Natal. Are you reading it with me? Chose me before all the house of my father to be king over KwaZulu Natal forever. For he hath chosen Belito to be the ruler, and of the house of Belito, the house of my father, and among the sons of the father, he liked me to make me king over all KwaZulu Natal. Amen. I read the Bible differently to you. Paul says, I thank my God. What does he mean there? Does Paul serve a different God? In terms of revelation, yes. Because you see, I have a revelation of God that I'm the head and not the tail. But there are some sitting here that do not have that revelation of God. That's why he says, I pray to my God that you may receive a revelation and opening up of the eyes that he may take you into a dimension the same dimension as that I see him I pray this morning that I can take you into a dimension where you realize and understand that you are the Ratsa of God you are the light of God God has chosen you before the foundations of this earth Psalm 44 verse number 3 I got a very short word this morning, but it's going to be good. Listen to this. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their arm, nor did their own arm save them. Now look, we did prophet did left hand, right hand. I didn't even see this. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance. Because you favored them. Because you ratsad them. When you have ratsa, land will be given to you in your possession. Oh. Again, you don't have to receive this. I will walk in ratsa and land will be given to me. I will take your six acres. <laughs> God, may you give their six acres to me in the name of Jesus. Ah, it sounds like some people are getting it this morning. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to come. Because he ratsas them, because he favors them, because he likes them. God has a modus operandi. Hmm. He says, let me look for some people that I like. I'm in a mood to bless. I've got some land to dish out. Who can I look for? Oh, that one over there. I like that one. Let me just give them some land. They're all ready to fight. They have their sword. They're ready to fight. God says, no, it's fine. Don't worry. Put your sword down. I'm going to give it to you in your hand. God will give you possession of the land just because he likes you. The Bible says that when God was speaking to Joshua, every place where your foot should tread, I have given it unto you that means that there's such a place that you can walk with god like i showed you before when you speak words that your words can create your future and your words can literally wait for you become a gps navigation system they can wait for you so that they became they become the footsteps of the righteous how they are ordered of the lord but there's another situation that when you are the likes of god that just because you are liked by God, that I put my foot and it is given to me. I decide I want to move into this region. Guess what? It's given unto me. I want to move into this area. Guess what? It is given unto me. That means if you are in an e-group, if you're an e-group leader, whether it be Stanger, whether it be Queensborough, Durban, North, and Schlanger, it has been given unto you. Hallelujah. Hmm. I feel like you're receiving it. Hmm. Why would God give us a region? Why would He do it? Simply because He likes us. I like God too. 
I don't know about you, but I like God. Not only do I love him, but I like him. God, I ratsai you. Go with me to Genesis chapter number 20 from verse number 1, King James. Mm, okay, I think I'm just going to read. Yeah. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. Just go. I'll stop you when I need to. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister, you liar. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Okay, if you don't know what's happening here, he's pimping his wife. Okay? He's a coward. Abraham is a big fat coward. He's saying, this guy, Abimelech, is going to take over us. Let me give him an offering. What do I have in my hands? I got a wife, yeah. The Old Testament was another thing. You guys must be blessed that you are in the new covenant. Amen. But God came to, now listen to this. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Wait, Abimelech is not, a, is not a godly king. Okay? Why would he do this? For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Why is he warning the ungodly king? I'm going to show you. But Abimelech had not come near to her. You know what that means. I don't need to expound. And he said, Lord... Wilt thou also slay a righteous nation? Meaning that Abimelech knows that, uh, that if Abimelech dies, the whole nation will go as well. Said he unto me, speaking of Abraham, he's saying, she is my sister. This guy said, he told me she's my sister. I'm clean. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. So we have Abimelech who's about to commit uh, a heinous crime of taking somebody else's wife and doing the deed. And then he says these words. He says, In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands, I have, I have I done this. Integrity is not what you think it is. He was about to commit a, a terrible thing. He was about to do something with somebody else's wife that another man should not do. Yet he says, out of the integrity of my heart, I've done this thing. Oh, you're not getting it. Integrity is not what you think it is. And God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this thing in the integrity of your heart. So, <laughs> so we could have dismissed it because we could have said, Abimelech is an ungodly king and therefore... We dismiss it uh, that, that because he's, he's saying out of the integrity of my heart, it's not a pattern for us, it's just a description. Do you understand? There's different ways to study the Bible. There's prescription and there's description. Do you understand? Prescription is a set way, an example for you. Description is just a description. Meaning that when David committed adultery, that is not a prescription. Are you Okay. It's just a description. It's explaining something to you. So we could have dismissed that Abimelech's motive was just a description. But now we have a prescription saying God now confirms what he says. Yes, I know that you did this thing in the integrity of your heart. But I had your back. I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. I didn't allow you to touch her. Carry on. Oh, I hope you're with me. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. Oh, this thing. People don't like the word prophet. I'm not a prophet, so I can esteem prophets. It's very easy for me to esteem prophets. Touch not the man, for he is a prophet. Again, there's a system in the Bible. It says, touch not my anointed. 
Mm. And do my prophets no harm. Why prophets? Are they special? Oh, absolutely. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 that he gave gifts unto men. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. A prophet is the mouthpiece of God. Oh, I'm going to mess you up. In the body, you have different body parts. You have arms, legs. Who is the head of the church? Christ himself. Where's the mouth? Three people got it. Where is the mouth? It's part of the head. A prophet is not part of the body. A prophet is part of the head. So God is saying, you know, why did, why did, why did the father have to send his son to die? Because he, he exalts his word above his name. He cannot operate outside of, of principles and measures that he has put in place for the world to run, right? So we understand that because Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, that we had to, that God had to bring a righteous uh, offering yet to bring a son to die. Blood had to be shed. The same thing is happening here. God knew that if you came against the prophet, I'm sorry, Abimelech, you do this thing to a prophet, I have to kill you. I'm sorry, but that's how it works. God is saying, this is the way that I work. You come against the prophet, I kill you. Oh. Okay, let's just dismiss it for the Old Testament. It doesn't happen in the New Testament. Just so you don't get offended. Except just remove that part when uh, Ananias and Sapphira came and lied to the apostles. So just take that out your Bible, okay? Because it doesn't happen in the New Testament. And he shall pray for thee. Now hold on. <laughs> Who's the liar here? Who's the liar? Abraham's the liar. And he even, even Sarah with him, he had convinced her to lie. Not only did he convince her to do a stupid thing, but he convinced her to lie to, in order to do it as well. I don't know about your wife, but my wife will never put up with that kind of nonsense. And the Bible says, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee. Wait. So the one, the one that committed the sin, the one that was the liar, the one that actually orchestrated this whole mess that we're in, with Abraham, Sarah, Abimelech, God getting involved, there's one person we can point and put all the blame on, it's Abraham. But guess what he has? Hmm. He has some ratsa. He has a little bit of favor with God. The Bible says he's a prophet, therefore you must not lay your hand on him. And not only that, he says, the same person that caused your trouble, you have to go to him so that he can pray for you. That will mess a lot of people up. Imagine God says, the same person, whee, you go to church and the pastor offends you because he doesn't... He doesn't smile. I'm sorry, I'm not a pastor. I know it says pastor, but I'm not a pastor. I'm not that guy. Although people around me say I'm very pastoral. Maybe when I don't have the mic, but afterwards I greet you, I hug you, I'm very nice to you. We can care and have coffee together. But you go into a church, many people are offended in the church because the, 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 the man of God did not operate according to the manner in which they expected him to. And guess what the Bible is saying here? Maybe some of you need to go and get that man to pray for you. The same person that caused the offense, that, that you believe caused your problem, is the same man that actually sometimes holds your deliverance. We've seen it. Many people, they've come to Centurion. I told you this. They, they, they would go to Centurion, get offended with prophet because he's preaching from the platform and he's preaching truth into their life and it forces conviction. They have to change. And now he thinks he's condemning them from the platform. I don't know your sin. So if I'm saying something and it's hitting you, it's God. It's not me. Go get offended with God. 
How many people and their lives would, would, would literally stop in that place? It would stop. They would leave. They would get offended. They would stop. And um, before I forget, won't you stand with me? Just stand where you are. The Lord said to me yesterday when, uh, when, when, when you guys were preparing what you prepared and, um, and uh, we were supposed to meet you instantly, the minutes it happened, God said to me that that thing, that seed in the ground is for your healing. And he said, by the end of this year, you will see you'll be made whole, you'll be fully healed. And, and these things that have followed you for some time will be completely removed from your life. This year you will see it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And, and, um, and people would get offended and sometimes they actually just need to go back to the source of, of their offense. And it says, and thou shalt live. So he will pray for you and, you'll be, and, and you will live. And if thou restore her not, then you will surely die and everything that is yours. Next verse. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears and the man was, were afraid. Of course they were afraid. Then Abimelech called Abram and said unto him, Why did you do this to me? And what have I offended thee? That thou hast brought on me and my kingdom a great sin. Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what so Let's just go New King James. And everyone said amen that I decided to change to New King James. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What do you have in view that you have done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought... <laughs> I thought surely the, the fear of God is not in this place and they will kill me on account of my wife. It's what I told you in the beginning. He was a coward. He thought that these are unsaved people. They're going to kill me. But indeed she is truly my sister. Now listen to this. The... Guys, we're in verse 12 here now. Abraham, just like, can you take some damn responsibility? Indeed she is truly my sister. How many people have you seen that they start to justify their sin? Oy. Ooh. You see, I only had one glass of wine, so, uh, you know, I wasn't really uh, drinking. Uh, okay. But indeed, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became our wife. You check when someone gets caught out. Do you know what he's saying there? I don't think he knows what he's saying. He's tongue twisting here. When people start to justify sin, they start to tongue twist. You've seen it, right? Yeah, but you know, I was going there and then, uh, uh, you know, then uh, I just happened to pass by and then I saw an old friend, you know, and then I had uh, six, six beers. Mm, okay. It was actually my sister's birthday, you know, next door and then it was next to the pub and yeah. <laughs> You're laughing because it's you. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said to her, This is your kindness that you should do for me in every place, wherever we go. Say of me, He is my brother. Again, He's telling His wife. When he married her, he's saying, listen, I'm a big coward. I've got lots of possessions and stuff, but I'm a big coward. And there's lots of people who don't like me. Therefore, I'm scared that uh, uh, they're going to kill you and they're going to kill me. So you're my sister. Okay. This guy. This is the father of your faith. Abraham. <laughs> then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and male, and female servants, and a pot of gold, and a big offering envelope. Oh, you never heard. Oh, you never heard it. Listen to this. The audacity of God. Tell me who is wrong in this whole situation. Abraham. But yet, in Psalm 44, chapter, Psalm chapter number 44, verse number 3, it says that you will, give, you will be given land just because you will be given possession just because you are liked by God. Abraham is operating under the anointing of Ratzeh, causing him... 
the, the innocent party in your book. When you look at the situation, if you have to judge it, Abraham, you are wrong. Abimelech, you are right. But guess what? That's not how God operates. God says, the one that I don't like must submit and must give into the one that I like. The Bible says that men shall give into your bosom, pressed down, shaken together, running over more than enough. Shall men give into your bosom? It's a spirit. It's, an, it's a dimension of ratzah. Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, male and female servants and gave them to Abraham and he restored his wife to him. Next verse. And Abimelech said, See my, what? Another one. So first, I give you some stuff. Let me give you all my furniture. Let me give you my possessions. Let me give you my assets. And he says, I got a couple pieces of land as well. I have to make right with you. Whatever land you see, it's here before you. Pick and choose. It's yours. Come on. I don't think you're getting it this morning. There's a realm that you can operate in where sin is no longer accounted. Oh. Moses, oh, there's a book. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a story I was going to say a story in the book of Moses. There's no book of Moses. There's a story in Numbers where it says that they came unto him and they were complaining. And they were complaining primarily because he had married an Ethiopian woman, which in that time was against the very law that he went up to the mountain for. Are you okay? So God gives a man law. The man comes down and disobeys the law. Are you okay? So imagine I give an instruction. I say, we all fast. I don't fast. God says to me, we must do this. Okay, good. As a church, we do this thing. You all carry on, do the thing. I don't do the thing. That's what happened. All 2.7 million of them get offended with, uh, uh, with Moses. They come to him. They complain. And what does the Bible say? That when they, re when they approached Moses to complain... The Bible says, and the Lord heard it. Hmm. Moses was in the wrong. Yet those company of people were swallowed up in the earth. They were consumed because why? They came against God's chosen. Amen. Next verse. Then to Sarah he said, behold, I have given your brother... <laughs> Check Abimelech. You know, he's, he's like, let me just play along with this thing. These oh, they're so deceived. I might as well just say it. <laughs> just to get myself in the clear. Behold, I've given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. That never said, you never said that before. So he said, sheep, oxen, land. Now, next verse says, silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Now, just hold on. Does this mean that... Uh, you can give an offering and then your sins are forgiven. I don't know. I leave that with you. Or should I not leave it with you? Shall I explain? Pardon? Shall I explain? Okay. <laughs> In Malachi chapter number 3, it says, Return to me. In what way shall we return to you? In your tithes and in your offerings. The Bible also says that you can increase the fruits of your righteousness. Increasing the fruits of your righteousness is getting sin removed from you. How do you increase the fruits of your righteousness? Okay. Then he said to Sarah, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all you are with and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. Poor Sarah is getting the blame now. <laughs> so Abraham prayed to God. Look at this. So Abraham prayed to God. He had put the healing inside of, inside of Abraham. And God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children. Meaning that healing, deliverance is locked up in the person that holds the spirit of Ratzah. For the Lord had closed up all the wombs of the house. This was before. Of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Let's see. I think where we're going here. Let me just see. Uh, 
ta 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 what which we on 18 yeah that's it you must understand that there's a realm in the spirit you get to a place in your walk that it's no longer what you do that keeps you saved it should be like that from the beginning but we operate in a thing called works within christianity my identity is formed in what christ did on the cross it is simple for me to just accept it. What you don't understand is that when He died on the cross for you, from that moment, you became royalty. Every single thing that you needed in life was given to you. The Bible says that I've given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. It is a posture, it is a it is, a, it, is a, it is a posture, the way that you walk and the way that you talk. Wherever I go, the enemy cannot touch me. Even if I make a mistake, the Bible says that all things work to... Some things. No, all things. Your mistakes, your sins, the place where you messed up, the bad relationships. All things work together for the good of those who are the called and who are walking according to His purpose. The Bible says it is working for us a far greater weight of glory. It is a position that you put yourself in. It is nothing that you do. Say, I am liked by God. Mm, I am favored by God. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am at the top. I am not the bottom. I am God's favorite. I am the apple of God's eye. God likes me. Say, God likes me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning you need to walk out here with a posture knowing that you are liked by God. Not knowing only that He is some God in the, in, in the sky. That we worship as a distant creature that maybe someday we can touch. No, God is in you, around you, upon you. Indistinguishable. You can get to a place where you are indistinguishable with God. You are mimshakt with, sorry, you are, you are schematizod with God. Where the Pharisees would have to come with, G, with Judas and be pointed out. The one whom Jesus is, I will kiss on the cheek. Why is that? Because Jesus and the disciples after three years had become one. The disciples walked like Him, talked like Him, preached like Him, acted like Him operated in the same power as he did they were schematized with him god liked moses the bible says that that israel knew god's 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 acts. The Bible says that Israel knew God's acts, but Moses knew his ways. Oh, there's a distinct difference. How can Moses, this is the last thing here I'm going to say. How can Moses have the audacity that he goes up to the mountain and the people of Israel erect a golden calf? Because they didn't know God personally. Moses had encounters with God. He had, a theo he had an encounter with Jesus Christ himself in the burning bush. By the way, that last scripture where Abraham was, that's the first time a healing takes place in the Bible. After an offering was given. Do you see? Hey? Do you see? Now, that will offend so many people. Guess what? She will get healed and you won't. <laughs> she will not be offended when that healing comes upon her. Let me tell you that. And they build a golden calf. And they start worshipping this golden calf. Even Aaron, who was so close to Moses, he was not the one that experienced those encounters. Only Moses did. And so Moses went up. And while he's up having an encounter with the Lord, they're building this golden calf. 
as he comes down, actually not, he doesn't come down. God says to him, you need to go down and see what those idiots are doing. And then the audacity of Moses to enter into a debate with God. God says, come, Moses, I tell you, I've got a plan. Let's destroy all these people and I make a nation of you. What you don't understand is all of you have, you've seen it one way. But let me give it to you another way. Uh, when Moses was judging all of the people, are you still with me? When Moses was judging all of the people on a daily basis, his father came to him and he said, Moses, this thing that you do is not good. Choose for yourself 70 elders. Lay hands on them, anoint them to be leaders of, a thousand, leaders of tens of thousands, of thousands, hundreds, and tens. Meaning that God would have a certain way that he operates, that he would put the anointing of 70 men locked up inside one man called Moses. The Bible says that Moses, his eyes did not grow dim. At 120 years old, God had to say, Moses, go and die. He had to be told to go and die. Moses, go to that mountain and die. Because if he was not told to do so by God, he would still be living right now. And so they come and God says to him, uh, you need to go sort out your people. And God's angry. And God says to Moses, Moses, I want to destroy the people. Now, you know the story. You know where I'm going to go. But this is what you didn't see. He says, let me make a nation out of you, Moses. He's looking at the whole of Israel and all the nonsense that they've been doing and how they're continually running away from God, building golden calves. He says, I don't like Israel. I'm willing to wipe them out. But this guy Moses, mm, I like him. I like him so much that I would rather get rid of 2.7 to 3 million people and just start over with the seed that is in this one that I like. Are you with me? I like him so much. Let me rather just create this, this Ratsa seed that is inside Moses. This ability, this prophet, this ability to communicate with me, to commune with me, to be obedient to me. I like the Ratzah that sits upon Moses. Let me make of him a nation. The same thing happened with Abraham. Look up and see. What do you see? As far as you see, I have given it unto you. I will make of you a great nation because God liked Abraham. And that's why he said, the seed that is in Abraham, I have to reproduce. Is Abraham the father of your faith? I said, is Abraham the father of your faith? If he was Ratzad, that means you are Ratzad by God. Because you are Abraham's seed. And then, and then, and then Moses, the only person in the Bible, it says that Moses begins to negotiate with God. And the Bible even says, he has the audacity to say, God, repents from your sin. Okay, you don't believe it, okay? Mm. Exodus 32, verse number 12. There is a place that you can get to with God. There is a place that you can get to with God that God likes you so much that not only... Do you get to commune with him? But he takes your counsel. Oh. God can take a human's counsel. Paul said, but who has the mind of Christ? Uh, then he goes on to say, yet we have the mind of Christ. But first it says, who has the mind of Christ that they may instruct him? Then it goes on to say, yet we have the mind of Christ. Does that mean you can instruct God? You interpret the scripture the way that you want. I don't know. What is God doing here with Moses? Why should the Egyptians speak and say, he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them? Go with me to King James Version. 
I want the actual word because people don't believe the Bible. Look on the bottom. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against your people. Oh, come on. You can get to such a place with God that where God likes you so much, there's a friendship that takes place. That where God would call you friend, and even God would listen to the counsel of a man that he likes, and he would say, God, you need to repent of this anger. Turn and repent, meaning, does he mean repent as in you have sinned? No, he means change your mind about the situation. Let me convince you. Why would I listen to you, Moses? Oh, wait, I like you. Therefore, I will listen to you. Amen. What is it in a man that he can negotiate with God, counsel with God? The Bible says that we are a little lower than angels. That word angels is not angels. That word angels is Elohim. The same word Elohim is when the Bible says, and God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, Elohim created. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Trinity in one is Elohim. That means that the Bible says that we are created a little lower than God, above the angels. Who are we that in our mouth, that if we speak the word, that angels are sent forth to minister on behalf of those who are yet to inherit salvation? What is this in our mouth that God has put dominion, that God has put royalty? We are made in His image. We are made in His likeness, meaning we look like God. Meaning that in His likeness, we act like God. Wherever you walk, you should be a walking, talking, looking like your Creator. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. And special thanks to those of you who give generously to this ministry. It's because of you that this ministry is possible. You can click the link in the description to give now or visit encounterchurchbelito.co.za forward slash give for more information. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to it and share it with your friends. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.